Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. One of the problems that comes with uh, growing up in Christian circles, growing up in the church, growing up around biblically literate people, is you find yourself memorizing verses or snippets of verses or phrases that showed up in hymns or sermons or things that your folks said over the dinner table. And uh, that happened to me growing up in a very biblically literate household and, and uh, going to church faithfully. Uh, this is one of the uh, passages where this happened to me. And um, I uh, memorized, resist the devil and he will flee from you. I picked that up, uh, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Um, the difficulty came when, um, uh, when I started trying to seriously apply it. And I would resist the devil and he wouldn't wouldn't flee from me. So uh, resist the devil, he will flee from you. And so then I did it, tried, resisted, 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 and temptation didn't go away. And what I uh, found uh, uh, sometime later when I was reading my Bible, probably reading the whole thing contextually as I ought to have, is that the whole verse says, submit to God, Res uh, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is a good example of how immediate context matters. So if we look, took that space right there between God and resist, it is um, plain that a lot of ego can get in between those two phrases. Uh, you can resist the devil on your own terms. You can resist the devil for your own reasons. You can uh, fight and strive and redefine righteousness and do all these sorts of things. Um, and it doesn't work because uh, the devil, uh, what, how should we say, the, the devil inhabits that kind of ego striving. But submit yourselves therefore to God. Submit yourselves therefore to God. That is the, that's the ticket. That's the ticket.